Will he? That's it. Fucking. Sonny, you're a gangster, a gangster, a gangster. Sonny, you're a gangster, a gangster. Son. Sonny, you're a gangster, a gangster, a gangster. Sonny, you're a gangster, a gangster. Son. All the day he raps, all the day he jogs, getting high to nap by. He come and take a lap. Now you'll hear him when he raps, you'll see him when he pops, and he don't give a fuck, man. He puts it straight up. Now this is the life of an outside gangster, an outside pranker. Can't hit but act a wanker. No feeling, no expression. See too many getting arrested and locked up for bullshit. Not relief and going, we can't face this. No comment, no comment, no comment. That's how it's best said. The feeling of getting arrested and the feeling of getting tested. The same old bullshit, just can't help it. I walk in the foot line, I go where I go. The homies in that lawn and a good few fours. Now this is to be cool kid, just trying to get through kid. All the day rap shit, all the day pop shit, till hatch the weed. And a lot of speed, want a gangster rapper, that's who I be. Sooner you're a gangster, a gangster, a gangster. Sooner you're a gangster, a gangster, so. Sooner you're a gangster, a gangster, a gangster. Sooner you're a gangster, a gangster, so. That alright, cuz? Who's bringing your banging sounds, spitting lyrical missiles? Trying to get out the underground like Elizabeth Fritz. I've written the pages up, stages up, possessing the best rhythm. I shook your hair, driver, lads, I'm fucking dead driven. I'm bringing you the rhythm, quick to get your head nodding, like you're sitting there watching Nicolette McLean jogging. I leave you no dope when I'm spitting these raps. You couldn't have stopped me, Mike, smoking with a nicotine patch. A wicked mean chap spitting these sick obscene raps, telling Billy McTain's that. To me, you look fat. A voice in the back of me head, so don't start, bro, cause looking down the ratchet, you still see an arsehole. With spark blow when the party starts, but then we kicking a few flows like it's martial arts. I'm living a pristine of steel that we don't bring, possessing more 16s than a pedo ring. Stop acting like you need no chin, when they hit me, you be seeing four rappers like me bebo skin. Here we go, let the free flow spin, and when I spit and you be feeling so much wind, call me a Nino's twin, bitch. Word. <laughs> 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 Life is so exquisite, I'm we're loving, loving every, every second, second that we live it. Cause life, life is so exquisite, we're loving, loving every second that we live it. Cause life is so exquisite, and we're loving every second that we live it. Cause life is so exquisite, and we're loving every second that we live it. For once, spit something nice. Two birds perched on birch and the light shines through the leaves. Inhale, breathe with my eyes to the sky. I see so many signs. North, south, east, the west, affect the feuds. Walk in your neighbor's shoes, you choose life. Birds and the bees, a single love bird flung harmoniously in the trees. He's looking for a mate to please. Like farmers, we sow our seeds. Winter's over, light breeze. The grass breeds fresh, free. In this kingdom, this is what I see. Won't you come on and walk, walk with me? me. Through Inch a mile, the fiend off the boards, we will die. die. Fishing for salmon, you'll feel so alive. Then back to the caravan park, a belly hike. Camper van chill where we flow with the tide. Now this is real, free. Sun sets low and disappears into the sea. To the sea, to the sea. Half the people who start taking drugs or starting heroin and all that to do because they have nothing to do. They go off to a party or something. If they go off and they don't do that, they're rap instead. Yeah. They aren't going to get addicted, you know what I mean? They're, get addicted to hip-hop. Yeah, they're going to get addicted to rap. Like, it's a different yeah. type of drug, but it's not fucking, it's not going to kill you, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not going to kill you. In most cases, it's not going to kill you. It's a tool bag. <laughs> <laughs> about what was real. So uh, what's really happening around like you know that's like we don't talk shit like we tell the truth. So uh, that's our goal is to tell the truth. Tell the truth of what we see on the streets and then I mean I kind of I've grown fond of it, you know what I mean it's good, it's, it became a good part of my life and you know, that sort of way like and I've got a lot of recognition for it and stuff like that and all I'm kind of grateful to it in that sense of like, I will kind of put effort into it. In the future, I just hope to be keep making good tracks. So I'll be happy with making good tracks. That's like 
if you get recognition, you get recognition. If you don't, you don't. But once you can look back on like a legacy or like a, the tracks you've made and say, well, that represents where I was at that time, I'll be happy with making decent tracks. I'm, I'm trying to swing my life around now. My illegal things that I done when I was younger. I'm trying to swing around you now to being legal and to being like telling my story the way that it should be told. You know? I want people to know what, what I, I've been through. And, and then my music is kind of like helping me. To, it's like a therapy. It helps me to get it out. Get it out of my system. Anger that I have in me against whatever. I write about it. And it's like a ter therapeutic. When I, when I write it and I see that something came out of maybe badness, you know, like if I got a song and it, and it made number one, wouldn't that be worth that badness, like? Uh, as everyone in this country that makes hip hop or music, you know, there's, there's a small chance of them actually making any money out of it or doing anything with it. So anyone that's doing it is pretty much doing it for the love of it, you know what I mean? So basically I just want to be, uh, basically, someone, I just want people to basically say like, no, I don't want to make money from it, I don't want to do anything, I just want people to acknowledge music rather than, you know what I mean, they don't have to like it, they don't have to like it, you know what I mean, that's just what I make it, and basically I just want to make music that I enjoy, I want to make music that, in 10 years time I just want to make music that, that I can listen to, and just, as long as I like it, I don't even care about what other people think of it, or where it goes, what I'm doing with it, because in this country there's not much of a chance of doing anything with music anyway. From the way I see it is, uh, the kids in New York, whatever, the kids in New York and that years ago, who didn't really have much money, that's where it started, you know, poor areas, and they just latched onto something that gave them hope and made them feel happy. And um, I think you can make a comparison with Ireland. It was the same. You know, I watched that program Reeling in the Years, and there was uh, they had a clip, I think it was 1983 or 84, it was breakdancing in Limerick. And then in 83, there wasn't even breaking. It was only breaking in 83 in Los Angeles. I'd only came to Los Angeles in 83. So we had the culture early. I don't know how, whether it was the Malcolm McLaren thing, bringing over to Europe with the Buffalo Gals video or whatever. But we all latched on to that. As I said earlier, it was something brilliant. It was something new and fresh. They didn't want to use that word fresh, but it was fresh, you know, with the true sense of the word. It was something like, it was just graffiti, the background, the backdrops they had of the graffiti in the videos, whatever, the scratching, there was something for everyone to do. Maybe that's the attraction of hip hop. If you don't have rhythm, you can pick up a spray can. If you do have rhythm, you know, you can mix. Or if you're very poetic and you have a great vocabulary and a way with words, you can rap or whatever. There's pretty much something there for everybody. Um, <coughs> but that, that's, what, that's what got us into it, you know. Um, back then, and I can understand the attraction like nowadays. Yeah, the um, the whole poetry side of Ireland would definitely influence hip hop in a big way. You know, you hear. I know that hip hop is, is said to have, have been created. You know, it came from New York in the, the the late 70s and 80s. But you have to look where did the population of New York come from? You know, they came from miles like this where poetry and lilting and storytelling and all these kind of techniques were being used and practiced. I suppose when a lot of Irish went to America, they would have brought a lot of traditions with them, a lot of stories they would have told and been working with the Africans in the building sites and been working with the other nationalities, that a lot of stuff would have rubbed off, you know? Well, I think the Irish, I also kind of have a good affiliation with music, like, going way back, like, I'd listen to everything. I'd listen to, like, Frank Sinatra, Tom Jones, Elvis, Nat King Cole. Then I'd listen to you too, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'd listen to everything. And then I kind of started listening to Tupac and stuff like that. Going back when I was younger, you could only really hear the commercial stuff unless you knew people that were kind of into the genre and were kind of say, oh, you have to listen to Wu-Tang Clan, you have to listen to this and that. You wouldn't listen. The only thing you'd know Wu-Tang, say Gravel Pit, Tupac, Change, and stuff like that. Only read really the late 90s, early 2000s, I really started getting into hip hop and that. And I think like, even going back to like, the Dubliners and Luke Kelly, Ballads have always been a big thing in Ireland. And it's always kind of been like the Irish and Ireland, it's good drinkers, storytellers, stuff like that. So I think that kind of, <clears throat> that shines through with the youth now and today. That listen to hip hop, it's kind of just like the modern ballads. It's kind of like it's upbeat. And like, you can just get your point across and get stuff out there, everything you want to talk about over the beat. And people will listen. 
Like the form of air, uh, or the hip hop we're doing, we're creating our own. Exactly, because like who, no one else raps with our accent other than Irish people, well, even a lot of And we don't work with the American. But we're creating our own it. sound, yeah, and our own look. Like fundamentally, Irish people are poets and literary and all, you know, so it's kind of in our blood. We just took another art form and made it our own again, you know. So I don't feel like we're the only the New York thing or the American rap anyway don't talk about gangbanging, drugs, fucking and shit like that, you know what I mean? We do, but we are wrong. Yeah, exactly, you know what I mean? People from Ireland will listen to it and, and relate. I was into the collecting records at the time. I was collecting records since I was a baby because my aunt used to buy me stuff since I was a kid. The first rap record or hip hop record I ever bought was Hey You The Rock Steady Crew. So it's like 1982 or 83 or when that record came out, there's no internet. No such thing as an MP3. Nobody, the CDs weren't even out. There wasn't even CD players out. They're on TV, these guys are on TV. They're pulling records back and forth. You see breakdancing, you're looking at a whole, the graffiti in the background. It was just magic. The whole different, the, the different style of clothes they were wearing, like the fat laces with the runners. You're just looking at it and like, you could look at it in two different ways. You could say these guys are clowns, or these guys are unbelievable. And most of us said these guys were unbelievable and wanted to become them. I personally think he, he brings, so, uh, you know, like hip hop mainly is not played really instrumentalist drummers or people. So he kind of gives that extra push that he can control the music himself. He's like the drummer, the pianist, the, the whole band is the DJ and he can, he can do things that work, work live. Imagine he drops a cut that he just thinks in that moment is going to fit perfectly and if it's, we would have missed that out. corporation used to have this thing, it was once a year where you could leave out your bed and your washing machine and stuff and the bin collect, they'd take it, the bin men would take it, right? So I knew they always advertised in advance, so I said fuck it. So I got up one morning on my, uh, real early on my rally burner, you can google the rally burner, got on the rally burner and flew around the whole of the area looking for old turntables and I found three, two Ferguson and a, and a pie and they were like in red leather cases and you lift up the thing and it took, you take the platter out and all the controls they had was in the front two knobs one was on and then the rest of the function was volume and the other one was a tone which is pace and treble and so you take the two of them out you have two separate uh, uh, things and uh, your mixer was basically two circuit boards with these four knobs and that was the first set of turntables I ever had and they'd done me for a while as well um, there was no pitch control we, we didn't know about slip mats so our records were shite underneath that had the white lines but that's that's how I got into DJing and then in, uh, then it, my uh, the principal of the school we asked the principal of the school could we set up a radio station at lunchtime so in the canteen there was a stage in the, in the, in the school and where they had like plays or whatever but it was stage doors so we had the speakers in the front in the canteen and we DJed behind at lunchtime and then I we know that was the radio, and we and then we got into proper radio in nineteen eighty seven. We started doing our first radio show, on pirate radio. Where where graffiti came out of just adding on like, do do you think it, it would have been like, being in in a, in a slum or in a grey area, that, you need more colours, mm -hmm. and you're looking at the wall and you're you're not you're not seeing many good things or decorations or the, the Truman bad parts of the city so they just kind of yeah. grabbed the wall and just added their personality to the wall and then that wall became their house you know their, their like the wall that they admired most out of the whole street and it pretty much brightened up very dark places in, in some streets around the world and brought you
honest way of expressing yourself. Yeah, it's just it? all expression. And it's just how you feel. Yeah. I mean, you can look at a, a, a graph in the wall, like, and like, you can look at it for hours, and you see all the stuff in it. Like, it depends on who done it. Then again, if you look at one, it's just a little tag or something. Like, yeah, you know, but yeah. It's just a way of expressing yourself. That person could have put like five hours walking to doing something in the wall, and it's just. And he'd step back and he'd just get 10 points better about himself. And that's like his that, track, like. Yeah, I mean, that's like yeah. his track or whatever, like. I mean, uh, that's what I would look at. Like, I mean, it's just another way of expressing yourself and letting bent and stress and shit. Yeah. Like, so hip hop is a very communal thing. It really is. And people who love hip hop, real hip hop, you know, those go, there's a lot of guys who say, I love hip hop, and they just go out and buy rap records. And they couldn't give a damn about the graffiti aspect of it, you know, the emceeing, the DJing. I mean, there was, a, there was a, a period there in the 90s when rap, there was no such thing as a rap group. It was MCs and a DJ were, were, was totally, like, you know, disregarded. Record companies said it's one guy that we don't have to pay. So we'll have a DAP machine. The DAP machine was the DJ. So there's not, and now people have, it's gone full circle and everything is like people who are into graffiti go to support the gigs. Beatboxing is huge, it's on the rise. There's a, a guy called White Noise, he's brilliant. You know, he's representing Dublin, he's excellent at it. And that's big and, it, and people appreciate it. You know, there's graffiti, um, there's breakdance contests and, and that every few months. There's graffiti exhibitions in town, guys like Jor and Rez and that showing their stuff. There's a, this Easter there's a graffiti convention at the Tivoli, a huge thing and they've got professionals from all over Europe coming to this you know so it's huge and loads of the rap heads will turn up to that and there's a breakdance contest or b-boy contest whatever they want to call it at this as well like so they always have been associated together and actually last year White Noise who's a beatboxer played at it so the whole thing always all, all, all comes together With what's going on up in the city, you got highly rollers nowadays. It's a fashion statement for these heads to carry guns. Lies getting more than cold blood over some charity funds. And his heads get taken out, some of the highs just storm. It's never been in so this goes with roll. Basically, I call Reza because I'm gonna wear red t shirts all the time. And uh, my favorite color is red. It just happens to be fucking the red bollocks as well. But basically, um, that's why you call me a red sock, because I changed my bastard. Why would you call you a terrorist, actually, anyway? Uh, it's just, it's kind of the name I picked from back in the day, you know, when I first started rapping, so... I always felt that I spoke out against the system and didn't agree with it, so I thought it kind of fit. Plus, couldn't think of anything better, so stuck. We had our own little community centre, it was in Nielstown, the Nielstown area, and they had a regular Friday night disco for teenagers, and they had like a twin deck thing all in one Citronic and you were allowed to bring down a few of your records and uh, give them to the DJ and he'd play them so we had our few and we'd be standing around listening to crap I don't know well what we thought was crap at the time Duran Duran or whatever uh, I always remember Rick Astley and Kylie Minogue but that was a bit later it was at 86 sitting around I stand at the wall waiting for our record to come on you'd nip over every now and then and go you're playing it and he'd go two more songs two more songs and then the minute he'd play the records there'd be a dash for the dance floor we'd be like because I see nowadays a lot of the b-boys are standing there and there's a gap and they're looking at each other kind of too cool for school who's gonna go out next we were killing each other to get on the dance floor because we knew it was only about five minutes if he played one record or you know but then we got a little bit older and he kind of knew us we were watching him seeing what he was doing he was a good dj brendan his name was and uh we were like you know can we have a shot and he'd let us take over he'd say well you can play three songs and he'd stand watching you but we got the feel for the turntables and then uh, a friend of mine a dj a guy who got into the music as well dj control he's a bit older than me he made a set of turntables i listened to so much hip-hop myself so it was just nothing else I wanted to do. I loved writing, like I'd spend hours writing when I was younger, so um, it's just almost like a natural progression, you know. Once you, once you learn to get your flow right, and especially hooking up with these boys now, it's just a bit of crack, like the banter, you know. So. When I really started, because like, being ginger, it's hard to get girls, so I needed an angle. <laughs> so I start rapping and uh, still on the old. Yeah, but, uh, no, I was actually good at poetry and shit in school, like, and then I kind of closely read dance head, but I kind of, all that shit. 
and then I'm going to listen to the Tupac song Life Goes On and then automatically it's like fuck all up this guy so I listen to the Tupac and phrases and then through listening to the Tupac you hear all that stuff and then I was going to do that so I was still good at poetry and I was getting the beats and I was rapping to the beats and making my own shit then I was like oh fuck it let's go with it like, so kind of that's how it started off to be honest with you, I mean, I'm a lot older now, and a lot of my friends who were rappers and stuff, it, it was, it was, it kept us going for a good while, you know. A lot of the friends, you think of it, we started when we were 11, 12, 13. It, it kept us, and we weren't interested in anything else. We dedicate all our pocket money went into either spray cans or records. You know, in the 80s, people didn't have a lot of money, so if you wanted to buy a record, sometimes you had to wait two weeks to get the money for it. So that's how dedicated we were, we spent our money on nothing else. But you get all these people and they're kind of encouraging these shit rappers. They're fucking... And, and they're going back the next day, I walked on it and now here's my new song. No, you didn't walk on it, you walk and you got home and you fucking, you walk on it for a while. You don't going to bring up the next day. And that's it, but people are too honest. No, everyone wants to be friends. And my whole thing is, fuck friends, fuck the scene. Fuck the Irish hip hop scene. There's no scene, you know what I mean? People are sitting there like, oh yeah, look like fucking, oh yeah, let's be friends. What's your tune? Your tune is great, do you want to do a song with me? Yeah, let's do a song. No, what's your name? Yeah, shit. Oh, you can't say that. You can't say that. That's what that like. If you walk up and you call somebody shit in Irish hip hop, the fucking shock and horror of it. Like it's, it's supposed to be honest Irish hip hop opinion. And people ask me, I'm a crap. I tell them I'm a crap. If I like them, I tell them I like them. It's as simple as that. It's fun. This and is fun. It's a, you got a great rise out of a guy when you're like pissing them off, whatever. Especially on the internet. But it's it's actually like it doesn't do any good in the end, really. You're better off just kind of like if people were to get together, you know, and help each other. It's the best way. Yeah, organize as many gigs or even organize as many MC battles as possible. Definitely, just get it out there, because there's no point in sitting in your bedroom with a mic. Because when you're 50, there'll still be the same guy sitting in your bedroom with the mic saying, "What could have been?" No, it's not really. I think it's too hard to get it out there. I mean, we don't have the backing of fucking radio stations and shit like that. Like, we don't have the backing of magazines and stuff like that to kind of get us on the forefront so people can have a decent listen and then decide whether we're good enough to be in there with the rest of them. But we don't get that. We're kind of just bowling underneath the underground. We're getting the odd radio show here and there at 12 o'clock at night and stuff like that. But you don't really... Like, 98 FM is supposed to be an Irish radio station. Why are they playing Irish hip-hop? Well, you go to France. It's a it's law. It's government law that like 15% of music played on the radio stations is homegrown. Like that over here. You can't. You, if, if we wanted to start up a hip-hop station now, we wouldn't be allowed. They wouldn't give us a licence. We'd have to play that commercial poppy rotation bollocks that they play. Like So... It's trying to break into that mainstream, and there's no one from the mainstream has accepted really? hip hop yet. Really and it's until someone does a DJ, a, a, a fucking PR man, a, 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 someone who but puts on events, during, or so, yeah, someone that fucking. Day and stuff. You play, music played during the day on, on normal stations. Because then, cause then if it doesn't make it, you'd be like, ah, oh, well, you know what I mean? But, I mean, but we're not making it, people haven't been given a chance. It's full of idiots in this fucking city of sin. I'm still convinced these radio should give us a spin in Sin City. as you said in Ireland aren't taken to it they're kind of saying oh you're trying to be black you're trying to be American you're trying to be this you're trying to be that but they're not actually listening to what we're saying like mm. if half of them listen to what like I push I was over in LA as I said I was playing Irish hip hop songs for um, Australians Argentinians Americans everything people from all nationalities and straight, not one of them kind of said that sounds funny they listened to what we were saying and then made judgement I don't think it's I think it's just the Irish mentality of it really it's it's kind of like, ah Jesus they're only some fucking, it's only some idiots or whatever. Like, I mean, they won't even, I wouldn't be surprised like Martin just clicked on it and they seen it at the Royals and they didn't even listen to it. That's what I'm saying. They, they, don't, they don't give you the opportunity. They over because they expect you to kind of sound naff or whatever. Like, I mean, yeah. like, whatever. Like, I mean, but I was just like, they kind they of, they don't give it yeah. uh, much of a chance. Like, I mean, they make their so assumptions like, before they even listen. We're not looking to the likes of the States to get anyone there to come across to be like, oh, this guy is nearly famous, so I got him on my track and I am. Um, because of this reason, no, I am up the top. You know, even though it's not like that, we're not afraid to take in guys that are willing to work their balls off. 
like Diego, who would come over here penniless to stay with us and produce and keep producing for the movement, I yeah. suppose, that we're trying to create by bringing in, and even like the guy coming from Poland to do rap, and we're not afraid to bring in that known guy and give that guy equal space, equal push, equal everything that yeah. we're giving ourselves. Because, do you know these people are, you can see who's hungry for it, you give them a chance, you give them a time, you give them a space and see what they can do with it. And if they come back, you see they're hungry and then you, you know, you work with them and you, you give them all you can. It's like we've asked for Kulo, you know, to come down from our ship up and, and MC from Dublin to do tracks for us and he said he's going to come. To stay, no kidding, I was a big that's yeah. it, yeah. Uh, I started off to stay on this poetry, as I said, I started off um, in prison really, and it was just, this, it was a pastime thing there, like just writing uh, poems for people like, uh, stuff like that, but then just uh, putting them over. It was a music class in the school, so I grew up in uh, basically doing an like, old school way to record. Uh, drums off a drum machine and play keyboards and off a keyboard and whatever like doing it that way like, and uh, just, just basically it's, just gave me something to pass the time with and just uh, slowed down really because I mean then when I left prison I was just like didn't miss down there you know what I mean so I'm just obviously going to keep, keep down there you know so uh, it was uh, something that was slow to do with I have two kids and a, a family now and a job and all that but still always been a great time for, for, the, for this you know it's been having a lot of fun already, you know <laughs> It's kind of gone, it's kind of ruined now. I mean, the people are saying, I don't know who wrote them now, nah, hip hop is dead. It's not dead, but it's it's been torn apart by the corporate companies, really. And it's it's pop music now. now since I went on the internet, people on them pages, like I've met so many people who are mad to do rap, and they have nowhere to go or nowhere to do it, but they have all these ideas in their head, they're just mad to get it out of it. It's just so hard. Oh, to get, to get someone to do it. That's the problem. Like, if we had someone to do it all the time, we'd be doing it. Like, I'd be doing it as a as a as a life. Like, I'd be in the show for 24 hours a day. Like, if I could get that to get. It's, it's more. It's, it's better because it's every form of other other music. I, mean, I love say, I love the lyrics. Like yeah, yeah but if you say like uh, oh jazz is better than hip hop. Jazz is involved in hip hop. You say soul is better than hip hop. Soul is involved in hip hop. You say pop is better, now pop is involved in hip hop, so that's why hip hop is the best form of music, because it's every form of music. There's always been, okay, I used to always think that people who are into hip hop always got very involved in it. You weren't just a fan of graffiti, a fan of rap. Back years ago, a fan of that. You always tried your hand at it. Anyone who liked scratching went out and tried to get a set of turntables. Anyone who's into graph or rap, they try to write lyrics. It was always something you got involved in. But not everyone who likes R and B, for example, as we as it's called now, writes songs or is trying to like they just go and dance to it in the club. It's it always you always got involved in it. We be take it, but we be kind of. Just want to be kind of appreciated for all the shit we put in, you know what I mean? Like we've kind of made the fucking start from the ground up, done that same, done all our CDs, all our own bleeding, promotion, all our own shit like that. So we think we like at the end of it, we do sit back, we're kind of like, won't we've achieved nothing until I appreciate it for it, you know what I'm saying? I suppose the battle at the moment in America is to be top and number one on MTV, and the battle for Irish hip hop is actually someone to go. Whoa, that's Irish hip hop, you know, and kind of go crazy and actually, well, get into Irish hip hop. So the breakthrough for us at the moment, I suppose, is trying to get noticed and not trying to break any, you know, charts. Que bonita es la vida cuando no hay movida. El paisaje sigue verde. Five years we could be on MTV, or we could be stealing your TV. Could, could be on, exactly. Por el campo. Me estiro, me levanto, voy andando y canto. Los pájaros me acompañan y sonrío. Se llama melodía formada a zapío. O la tranquilidad de escuchar un río. Y no la ciudad, trenes, coches y gritos. Eh, es mi paraíso. No hace falta, ni tengo un móvil pijo. No tengo moto y el acelerador no piso. No hay ni un requisito. Estoy vivo y el sabor es tan exquisito. Por varios esperado y no muchos apreciado No hablemos de eso que están terminados Hay que volver a intentar empezar Volver a nacer, amar y verlo brotar Life is so exquisite We'll open every second that we live in Cause life is so exquisite We'll open every second that we live in Cause life Spit some 
something nice Two birds perched on birch and the light shines through the leaves Inhale, breathe with my eyes to the sky I see so many signs North, south, east and west Affect the fuse, walk in your neighbor's shoes Choose life, birds and the bees A single up bird flung harmoniously in the trees Looking for the mate to please Like farmers we sow our seeds Winter's over a light breeze The grass breeds fresh, free In this kingdom this is what I see Won't ya, come on and walk with me The inch a mile, to feed it off the boards We will dive, fishing for salmon You'll feel so alive, the back to the caravan park, the belly high Camper van chill where we flow with the tide Now this is real, free, sunset slow And disappears into the sea Life is so